Hello, guys. Okay, so this is the new baby. Uh, um, calamity <laughs> is all done. And if you follow my Facebook or Instagram, you've seen pictures already and read her story. It's up there. Uh, if you want to go take a peek, go take a peek. I am right now getting some clay out and I ran out of regular gloves. So I'm using actually gloves that came in a hairstyling kit that I did not use before um, to use now for the clay. And I need the clay for her face. Um, I'm exposing her septum, I think is what it's called. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm not sure. The like nasal bone behind where your nose would be. That's that's my idea. Um, I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that that's what's going to look like anyway. I've got uh, plans for her story already. This is one of those dolls where I had the story before I had the doll. Um, you know, sometimes the doll comes first, sometimes the story comes first. I never know what's going to happen. I'm just measuring out clay right now. As you know, it's part A and part B, and it's epoxy sculpt. Love this stuff. It's the best clay I've, I've worked with. I like the paper clay a lot, but I can't trust the, uh, it, the structural integrity of it. I have to know that... If somebody in Europe buys this doll, not that I'm expecting them to, but if somebody across the sea, wherever they may be, buys this doll, I need to know that whatever I do to it will make the journey. You know, and plus, people buy dolls and they get them home and if they have animals or kids or, you know, earthquakes, whatever, and the doll gets bumped, I don't want to have something that I did come apart because it wasn't made well enough. So I do try to uh, see to it that everything that I put on these dolls is going to last a lifetime. Um, and this stuff dries rock hard. Rock hard. It's paintable, sandable, drillable. It's everything you can imagine that it should be, it is. This is really, really good clay. Um, I just wish I was a better sculptor, not the best sculptor, but you know, I'm working on it. I have the light on behind me. Hopefully it's not interfering too, too much, but you know, we've established that I need to see. So it's one of those deals. It's a trade off because this light is too bright for the video. And if I don't have light, I can't see, and then I can't do anything. And I end up with an awful, horrible headache and I don't want a headache. Um, you'll notice on this doll that I didn't take her clothing off. And I did that because it is attached to her. It is attached at her wrists and the uh, she's got a little umbrella thing, like a little parasol. That is stitched to the dress as well. So I couldn't take these off. So I'm working around them. They're dirty. They're going to get dirtier. I'm going to see to that. So, uh, here we go. I'm not changing her eyes out. I'm leaving the brown eyes that's in her because I think they look sickly. You know, if the eyes look sickly, I leave them alone. I made a doll. Um, gosh, what was her name? Janet, I think. Jaundice Janet. I made her jaundiced because her eyes were already yellow when I got her. And they were the perfect jaundiced color, you know. So... That's what that was. Um, this little girl, I took my Dremel tool today. <laughs> my table is a mess. You'll see when I tip you down. Um, I took my Dremel tool and I made a groove around her nose because I wanted to, to cut her, knock her nose out. So I made a groove around it nice and deep. I thought plenty deep. And then I covered it with my my rag, my work rag, 
and I took a pair of heavy pliers and I bashed her in the nose. Well, it didn't break. I thought, okay, being just too gentle. And I made a good deep groove around that nose. Keep that in mind. So <laughs> I covered it back up with the rag and I bashed it with the pliers. It still didn't break. I thought, okay, all right, I see how you are. So I covered it back up with the towel and I walloped her with them pliers. <laughs> and I busted not only her nose, I busted her lip, I crushed her head. So I had to have my husband uh, re-glue everything except what I didn't want. And uh, he's he just shakes his head at me now. When I come at him with things like that, he just shakes his head. He doesn't even ask anymore. He's getting smart. <laughs> he did ask me, where's your nose? Do you want me to put her nose? He said, no. I threw the nose away. I just want the rest of it. You got to stabilize it because she's perfect but she needs to be stabilized. And he's like, oh, okay. If this is what you want. Yep, it is. <laughs> oh, you just never know with me. And okay, the hole in her head is so tiny. I don't know, see the, the umbrella is sewn to the dress. So that's fun. Just dropping that ball of clay in there. And I have, there's a piece of cloth that's glued on behind the eyes. And I want to fish that cloth out of the way so that the clay can get up to the, well, doggone it. Come on. Here, I'll show you. See the red? That's clay. Or that's cloth. I don't want the cloth. I want the clay. Um, and it's starting to annoy me because the cloth is not, and if I pull the cloth out, her eyes will come out with it and I don't want to take her eyes out. I just want the cloth out of my way. I don't think that's too much to ask, is it? All right, I'll just, by golly, work around it. I've said before, I'll say it again, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I am bracing the front as I'm pushing from the back. Come on, let go of my glove. I have a little bit of water here because the clay's wanting to stick to my doggone glove. Oh my goodness. It should not be this difficult. Seriously, it really shouldn't. I can't see. Oh, I see what I did. You guys, I'm telling you what, pliers, I'm gonna pull that fabric up. If I have to reattach, oh, the fabric is just, this is ridiculous. I'm thinking this was gonna be easy peasy lemon squeezy. I just pulled one of her eyeballs out. Did not want to do that. I mean, it's fine, whatever, but that is not what I had intended. So now I gotta fish the eyeball out and put the eyeball back. I don't know where it's at. It's in this mess somewhere. Where the hell did it go? It can't be far. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? That's it. <laughs> oh. Okay, there you go. Now, give me this clay. As I have the eyeball where I want the eyeball, I'm going to clay the crap out of it. Right over top of the fabric. Oh my goodness. Seriously, it's wanting to stick to my glove. and not where I want it to go. Pardon the top of my head, people. 
I'll get you in a second and put you down so you can see what I'm doing. I just want to pack this clay in nice and firm so I have something to work with and uh, make sure it's not going to come out as soon as I start carving on it. I'll be crying crocodile tears. Okay. I don't know if you can see the inside. Can you see? There's the red fabric in the middle and then the clay on both sides. I've got the clay and this is what her face looks like now. So I'm going to carve on that. Um, I will tip you down. Hopefully you can see. Hopefully. I will try to angle her so that you can see, but I can't make any guarantees. Because, you know, it is what it is. Okay. So, first things first. This was the cup I had the resin in. So that red stuff you're seeing is red resin. Um, it's just plain water inside here. There's no no red in the water. That is just dried resin. So that's what that is. Okay. So I got to get down up on here so that I can see what I'm doing. I wet the tip of my tool and I'm smooshing clay all around this opening. Excuse me. I will turn her back around shortly. I want to uh, I want it to be not jagged, but not uh, not real smooth either. Um, I'm going to have to push some of it back in because I don't need all of this in the front. But I want some of it. That makes sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay. Let me get this one. This one is shaped with a chisel tip. Yeah, made sure I got the right one. I'm telling you it's a chisel tip and you're looking at it going, no, it's not. Oh, goodness. This is loose. Why is this loose? Why is this always happening to me? My goodness. Find a different one. Gosh. This one's not quite a chisel tip. Can you see what that tip looks like? But it'll work for what I want it to work for. I will make it work. I'm just smoothing out the edges where it meets the skin. Um, I want the skin to look icky and gross and like just falling apart. Well, that's too far. Can you see what I'm doing? I hope so. Oh, I do need to figure out a better. I have a camera, you know, like a, a digital take outside, take pictures camera, and it's got a video setting on it. I'm going to have to look at that and see if uh, that will work. Right now, it doesn't have any batteries, and I have to figure out the battery situation. I don't even remember what kind of batteries it takes. It's been so long since I've used it. But I have a tripod and all of that. You know, it can't hurt to try, right? Okay, I'm trying to smooth this down a little bit. Um, like I said, I don't want it too smooth, but I also don't want it elephant man either. 
you know, I need a happy in between. Let me see about this one again. Okay, that one's looking pretty good. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm trying to concentrate and make sure I don't screw the pooch on this. You know? Because uh, once this dries, if I want to change it, <clears throat> excuse me, if I want to change it, I have to go back in with a uh, drill. And I would just rather do it when it's wet and pliable. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, don't move. I liked you right there. Okay. I turn around. What do you think? That look good? I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks like kind of like what I'm going for. Um, now I just have to let it completely dry. You know, I need a needle tool. I don't even know if I have one. I have tools everywhere, but I don't know if I have a needle tool. You know what I bet I did? I bet I loaned that one to my daughter. I bet you that's what I did. Well... Poo. All right, this will work. This is a teeny weeny itty little teeny whiny teeny tiny dotting tool. That'll work. I think. All right. I'm trying to make this. Nope, this is too big. Let's see what else have I got that I can use. I've got a pointy tool. Let me see if this will work. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to drag her over into the light. Come into the light, Carol Ann. Come into the light. Yes. That's working beautifully. All right. Yes, ma'am. Now I'm cooking with gas. All right. Now I just need to texture this. And I got to go look and see if I'm texturing it correctly. Because I truly don't know. Um... I might have to smooth it all back out. And if that's the case, well, crap happens, right? Where is my toothbrush? Where? This will work. It's not my toothbrush. There's my toothbrush. I see it. All right. This is just a cheapo, and I mean cheap. They sell these for kids. Contemporary crafts. It's a stencil brush, brush, but it's cheap. I wouldn't even use this for stencils, but it makes excellent texture. Um, I mean, it really works good for texture. Okay. What do you think? Pretty good. Oh, I need, you guys could have told me that I shortened one side of her nose. That would have been a good thing to know. I 
I like really got to get in there. I want to be able to see what she's thinking. Okay. That's pretty good. I'm going to have to go around and clean up her eye. Her one eye went wonky. I don't care about that either. I think that adds to it. Don't you think? I mean, look at that one eyeball. That's a little wonky. I don't mind it. Clean up her mouth. Um... I mean, I did have texture on this already. I did that, the Demented Derma texture. This was a doll that I had started quite a while ago. And I kind of had it in my mind what I wanted her to be, but I couldn't decide. So it was one of those deals where I will do a little bit of this, do a little bit of that, see what I like the best, you know, throw a whole bunch of crap to the wall and see what sticks. And unfortunately nothing stuck that I liked so I have to go back now because you can see the the texture color around her face I don't want it to look like she's a clown so I am going to go back in with the um, crackle paste and I'm going to add an extra layer to that texture and um, let it dry. That stuff takes forever to dry though, so I am going to put that on her and I'm going to lay her on the floor in front of my space heater while I do a couple of other things. And then I will, as soon as that's dry enough, plus I have to fix this, once that's dry enough, then I will um, upload this video and we should be good. Right now, I am going to call her Carol Ann because she came into the light with me. I don't know if that'll stick. I'm pretty sure it'll stick. But we're calling her Carol Ann. And if you haven't already, if you haven't already, please click subscribe, click like, come back for part two. Um, I don't foresee her being a long, drawn-out doll. I think she's going to be pretty quick. A lot of the stuff is going to be done off-camera. Like I said, this uh, this chroma crackle, this stuff takes a long time to dry. So I'm hoping that I have uh, a video for you tomorrow night. If this isn't dry, there is nothing I can do about it. Um... Let's see. This says it may take one to three days. So I will come back as soon as this stuff is dry enough for me to come back and we'll do part two. And I have to find out where I put her hair. I don't know where I put her hair. I think it's in that box behind me. Not positive. But um, yeah, I think that it's going to be fun. So please click like, please click subscribe, please come back and have fun with me. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.